What do Whiskey and Enterprise Immersive Software have in common? Not much, unless you're on Thinkbomb Island in Second Life. My name is Erica Driver, co-founder and principal with Thinkbomb. We're a boutique analyst firm covering work-related use of the immersive internet. In January 2010, we published a research report titled the Enterprise Immersive Software Decision-Making Guide. In February, we completed construction on the distillery, an immersive experience based on this report. Our first stop will be the Options VAT. Software selection is a challenge in emerging markets. Enterprise immersive software is no different. This market is small, $50 million U.S. in 2009. It's also fragmented and volatile. We're tracking nearly two dozen vendors. So how can a decision maker find order in all this chaos? We recommend that before you go too far with technology discussion, you ask core business questions. What business problem are you trying to solve? Ask what kind of experience you want to create using immersive technology. And finally, how will you measure success? The next stop on our tour is the requirements room, where we'll discuss three common use cases. Small meetings, large meetings and conferences, and training. The most basic use case is presentation style small meetings with a few to a couple dozen participants. Most vendors you'll come across can address this use case. Participants need communication tools and screen or file sharing. Collaborative meetings benefit from additional productivity tools like drag and drop office document integration, shared whiteboarding, shared web browsing, brainstorming tools, and voting or polling. Large meetings have similar requirements to small meetings, but for more people. Large meetings have at least a few dozen participants, more commonly a few hundred, and sometimes thousands. Conferences typically consist of a few things. Large meetings, typically keynote presentations or general sessions. Small meetings, breakout sessions, sometimes held in simultaneous tracks. An exhibit hall or poster session area where you might find trade show booths and a networking area for attendees. Today, it's a trade-off between massive scalability and a rich 3D experience. You can get one or the other, but not both in the same solution. The two forms of training we covered in our report are classroom style and simple simulation. Classroom style training is similar to meetings, except that training sessions are designed to meet specific learning objectives, while meetings may be exploratory, unstructured or agenda-oriented. Simple hands-on style learning simulations typically involve one to a dozen or more participants. The environment may be customized to look and behave like the physical environment in which the learner works. The simulation is designed to achieve specific results and is interactive. By coming in proximity with or clicking on objects, the user can trigger events. With nearly two dozen vendors in this emerging market, and more coming out every quarter, combining use case requirements with limiters can help whittle down your vendor list. Let's fly up to the top of the filter tower to begin our discussion of important limiting factors. We have identified seven critical limiting factors, each of which is represented as a floor in this filter tower. One of the most common limiting factors is security. Security requirements can be derived from corporate policy, compliance requirements, or government regulations. They're often industry-specific. If you require secure data or isolation from other systems, consider solutions that run behind the firewall. Other important security considerations include data encryption and integration with the enterprise directory. Before going too far with a vendor, it's important to understand how their software would integrate with your existing business systems. Aside from the enterprise directory, other desirable integration points are the web, office productivity software, and document repositories. Some vendors provide integration with customers' learning management systems or with external social networking tools. Scalability is a limiting factor, particularly the number of people you want to be in the same place at the same time. 
Most 3D environments support 60 to 100 users in a single space. For some vendors, the recommended average is lower than this. Several 3D vendors can support multiple hundreds of users in a single space. The Pseudo 3D Virtual Event Platform vendors offer orders of magnitude greater scale, tens of thousands of users in the same virtual space. The next limiter we'll discuss is technology prerequisites. Check to make sure that your target users have headsets, powerful enough computers and graphics cards, adequate internet bandwidth, and permission to use the software, including voice over IP, on their computers. Some vendors offer web-based solutions which minimize some of these requirements. Another limiting factor is skills. Does your organization have the skills it needs to deploy and derive business value from immersive software? You don't have to do it all in-house, but you will need skilled people on your extended team. One type of skills required is design. This may be instructional design or 3D design. Another type is building. These are the skills required to create or customize your immersive environment or experience. The third major type is scripting or programming. Getting budget for emerging technology is an issue for many early adopters. Diverse vendor pricing models make it difficult to compare the cost of one solution against another. Some vendors charge per user per hour, while others charge based on number of concurrent or named users. Defining your expected usage patterns is critical to finding a cost-effective solution. Factor in the total cost to get deployments up and running and to maintain them into the future. Some vendors are charging recurring annual license fees even if you run the software in your own data center. Support is an important consideration, especially when dealing with small vendors or vendors new to the enterprise software market. The vendors in this emerging category differ widely in the support they offer. Look into this carefully during your vendor selection process. The last stop on our tour is the recommendations room. Create a list of use case based requirements and rank their importance. Scan the full vendor landscape before making a decision and look at all your options. Take a portfolio approach and select one or two preferred vendors. Fill in the gaps with specialists who can meet needs for large-scale conferences, low bandwidth areas, or complex simulations. Look for reuse opportunities, but concentrate on each use case separately initially to thoroughly understand requirements. 2010 has already started out a busy year with new entrants, acquisitions, and other changes. Many vendors are actively seeking outside funding, and not all will receive the investment they require to continue operations. Get as much hands-on experience as you can. Attend business-oriented events held in various immersive environments. If time and resources allow, install multiple technologies and test them for your target use case. And finally, check references carefully. Talk with all reference customers the vendor provides. And via your social networks, seek out conversations with additional organizations using the product. Thanks for watching this mini video tour of the distillery, a ThinkBomb immersive technology selection experience. You're welcome to download the report, the Enterprise Immersive Software Decision Making Guide. And please get in touch if you have any questions.